Hi everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. Today we're going to be talking about some pretty basic things about circles. Parts of a circle and then how to calculate the circumference of a circle. So first we're going to take a look at the different parts of a circle. We're going to look at the circumference formula and then we're going to answer some really basic problems for it. So follow me along. Ready? So the most important first part of a, understanding a circle is this point here, that point, which is simply the center. The center of the circle is obviously the middle point. The middle point of the circle, which is called the center, is connected to the edge of the circle by what's called a radius. A radius connects the edge of a circle to the center. And the radius, no matter where it is around the circle, is always congruent to each other. Okay, any radius would be congruent to another radius. The plural of radius is radii. So I'd be able to say that a circle has all congruent radii. Okay, now, after connecting the center of a circle to the outside of the circle, okay, we have what's called a chord. A chord is a segment that connects two parts of the circle together. Okay, notice it's not necessarily touching the radius, it can, and I'm gonna show you that in just a moment, but it's simply a segment connecting two parts on, on the edge outside of the circle. Okay, now, a special type of chord is called a diameter. A diameter has endpoints on either part of the circle, but a diameter is special because it goes through the center of the circle. Okay, so a diameter is a special type of chord. Diameter is also double the radius. So think about it. If the radius is just from the center to the edge of the circle, if I have another radius, okay, going from the center to the other edge of the circle, and it's one straight line, that's my diameter. So it's a radius plus a radius, which is 2r, twice the radius. The circumference of a circle is really the term we use for the perimeter, okay? It's to calculate the measure of the distance around the circle. That's what the circumference is. There's two formulas for the circumference, which are actually the same exact thing. The first one is C, circumference, equals pi times D, where D stands for the diameter. And in that first example, three centimeters is the entire diameter. And we know it's a diameter because it stretches from one edge of the circle to the other edge, and it goes through the center. If it doesn't go through the center, then it's not the diameter. So the formula is simple. I would just do pi times that diameter three, and that would be my result, three pi centimeters. Now, if you are being asked to actually put the, the, those values into a calculator and round to the nearest place value, tenths or hundredths, you would use the actual decimal equivalent for pi. It could be 3.14, 3.145, and so on, whatever it could possibly be. If you're asked to find the circumference and you're given the radius, well, since we know the radius is really just half of the diameter, we would follow this formula, c equals 2 pi r, which is really the same as this formula. Instead of d, we have 2 times r. And we said that before, if I double the radius, I'm going to get the diameter. So I would do 2 pi times my radius of 3. Notice I know that the 3 is the radius here because that's all that's labeled. Whereas if I have the full length here, I know that's really for the diameter. And 2 times 3 is 6, so I'd simply just call it 6 pi centimeters. Okay, so naming parts of a circle. So here, I have this diagram. I've got lots of things going on. The way we name a circle is by its center. So if I looked at this circle, I would simply name it circle A. And this is the symbol for a circle. It's a circle with a little center marked in. Name the radii. Now, what we should know is that the radius, remember, matches the center of the circle to a point on the outside of the circle, okay, on the actual circle itself. So I would look at this and I'd say, I definitely see a lot more than just one radii. Here's one, BA, CA is one, DA is another, EA is a fourth, FA is actually the fifth. I actually have a five radii in this one diagram. A diameter, a diameter is a chord that goes through the center, okay? And a diameter is really just the radius doubled. So if I look at this diagram, how many diameters do you think we have? It's two. Here's one, BE, put, I put it in green, and the other one is CF. 
So you have two diameters here, BE and CF. Now chords. A diameter is a special type of chord. So both of those are definitely chords, BE and CF, but a chord doesn't need to go through the center. If it goes through the center, it's a diameter. So do you see another chord here? You should. It's CG. So we actually have three chords, and I put them all in blue. The two diameters are chords, and then this is also a chord here. Now, doing some really quick calculations. It says if BE is 16, so BE is a diameter, find AE. So if BE is 16, the full diameter is 16, I'm asked to find AE, which is simply the radius. The relationship from the diameter to the radius is that you divide by 2. So 16 divided by 2 is 8. So if the full length is 16, then this little length is just 8. It's half of it. If AF is 5, find AD. What do we notice about AF and AD? They're both what? They're both a radius. And radii are all congruent to each other, so their measures are equal to each other. So if AF is 5, then AD is also 5. If AE is 7, find CF. If AE is 7, find CF. So AE is a radius. CF is a diameter. So it doesn't matter that this AE isn't involved with CF. We actually know that AE is equal to AF. So if AE is 7, then AF is 7. And if this is 7, then CA is 7. 7 plus 7 is 14. Does GC equal CF? Now, here's the deal. The diameter is actually the longest chord you could possibly have. Anything else connecting other two parts of a circle together would result in a smaller segment than the chord that goes through the center of the circle. So by definition, then, the diameter will always be larger than any other chord that doesn't go through the center. So does this chord, GC, equal CF? The answer would be no. A chord that does not go through the center is shorter than the diameter, and that's always going to be the case. All right, bottom problems here. Find the diameter, I'm sorry, we're going to find the circumference of these two circles. So first, this is giving me a diameter. If I'm given the diameter, I want to use the formula of pi times the diameter. So I'm simply going to just do pi times 6, which is 6 pi centimeters. If I'm given the radius, the formula is 2 pi r. So I want to do 2. Oh, I also put it in decimal form if you need help with decimals. You're just really doing 6 times 3.14. I did round to the tenth place as well. And now if it's a radius, we want to do 2 pi r. So 2 times pi times the radius. 2 times 5 is 10. And if I do need my decimal equivalent, it would be approximately 31.4 centimeters. Now, the last skill we're going to take a look at. If I give you the circumference, and I ask you to then work backwards and find the diameter and the radius. If the circumference is equal to pi times the diameter, I would plug in my values as the circumference is equal to the diameter times pi or pi times the diameter. You can put it in either order. The way to solve for the diameter would then be to divide both sides by pi. So if I divide this side of my equation by pi, and I divide this side of my equation by pi, and I round my answer to the nearest tenth, we should be able to get 31.8. Now, what's the relationship between the diameter and the radius? I simply divide this number by 2. So if my diameter is approximately 31.8, then my radius is 15.9. Same thing here. If I set this up, 50 is then equal to the di diameter times pi, if I need to calculate the diameter, I would then divide both sides by pi. 50 divided by pi is about 15.9. And the relationship with, between the diameter and radius, I would then divide that by 2. It's approximately 8.0. I'm rounding to the tenths place, so that's why my numbers look this way. Next one. My circumference is 25, so 25 is equal to the diameter times pi. Divide both sides by pi. I would get 8.0, and then my radius would be 4.0. And the last one, if my circumference is 314, then 314 is equal to d times pi. Divide both sides by pi, I get 100. 
and then my radius is 50. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope it was helpful for you.